In this video, we're going to learn how to use the zip function in Python. Now zip is built into base Python, so you'll have access to it no matter what you're doing in terms of your Python imports. And what zip does is it will take some iterables, any number of them, and combine them into tuples in an element-wise fashion. So basically it's useful for making, say, separate lists into a bunch of paired tuples. And I'll give an example of what that means. So maybe you have one list that's storing some latitude data, like this, and another one that's storing longitude data, like this. And each of these numbers actually corresponds to one another element-wise. So like this four and this six would be the same latitude and longitude for the same object. And this five goes with this three, etc. And we don't really want them as these two separate lists. We'd rather have them paired together so that we know that these are supposed to be together. Well, one way we could do that, extract them into a bunch of tuples, is with the zip function. So what we're going to do is run zip, and then we just pass in our two objects here, latitude, comma, longitude. And zip will actually return an iterator, not a whole new list by itself as default. So we're just going to use this extra construction star within these braces that will extract the resulting zip into a new list of tuples. So we'll run this and we should see all of our latitude and longitudes now grouped up in a new list as tuple pairs. So that's what we see here. We have four, six. They're now a pair of tuples. And with zip, you can actually pass in more than two inputs. So let's say we had uh, another variable that went along with these two. We have latitude, longitude, that's like X and Y position. What if we also had an altitude that's like a Z position? Maybe we wanted to pass in three things and make three tuples. Well, we could do the same thing. We'll just add it to our call. So we'll save altitude. This time we're gonna zip three things together and everything else is the same. Now we'll just end up with a list of three tuples instead of two tuples. Now it's worth noting that if you try to zip two things together where one of them is shorter than the other, it will keep everything up until the length of the shorter object. So let's say we had two lists, short and long. One of them only has four things in it. The other one has eight. If we try to zip them together and store it, we're only going to manage to zip the first four things together. The last four things in this longer one are not going to be included in that. If you do actually want to keep items in the longer list, you can do that if you import the iter tools that zip longest function. So we'll show an example here. We're gonna say from iter tools import zip longest. This is basically just like zip, except it will keep everything in the longer list as well. And anything that doesn't have a match will be filled by some value that you specify. So we're gonna say zip longest, short, long, just like before, but now we can specify a fill value. In this case, we're just going to leave it as the default, which is none, so we'll say fill value equals none. And again, we'll just extract that into a new list with star inside of a list. But we can see this time, instead of only getting four tuples, we now have gotten eight tuples, and the ones that didn't have a corresponding pair are just filled with this default value that we provided. So zip can be a very useful way of quickly grouping together data that belongs together. If you found this video useful, you can drop a like or hit subscribe. And thanks for watching.